Hey everyone, welcome back to Box Art Battle. I've got a special treat for you this time. We've got a truly mystifying battle today, one that goes deeper than anyone would have ever imagined. I first saw the cover for this movie back in like 1995. I was still in high school. My friend and I were just walking through a blockbuster and we stumbled upon this thing. And it's so ridiculous that we still talk about it today. The tagline for this movie is, when you're a slave, you only have one weapon. And that weapon is... Black Rage! That's right, Black Rage. Look at the rage in that guy's eyes. The clenched fists, the denim suspenders? If that cover isn't the greatest thing you've ever seen, wait until you see the back of the box. More Black Rage! This guy means business. The suspenders are now unbuttoned. It looks like he fell into a vat of posing oil. That priest's carving knife doesn't stand a chance. And where's he gonna stab this guy anyway, holding the knife like that? In the foot? Come on. Okay, now let's get to the real problems of Black Rage. As hilarious as this box is, after a little research, things start to unravel. This originally came out in 1972, and when it was released then, it wasn't even called Black Rage. It was called Charcoal Black. In Australia, they called it Catch the Black Sunshine, which will make more sense in a second. Now onto the plot, and I am not making this up. It's about two slave brothers, one black, one an albino. I'm assuming that's the Black Sunshine. Anyway, they discover a treasure map, but it's taken away by the Evil Taskmaster. It actually says Evil Taskmaster on the back. Isn't that redundant? But check this out. You see this rage-filled, suspender-clad gent on the front? This guy isn't even in the movie. Neither is the Evil Taskmaster on the back. They have nothing to do with this movie. And remember when I said one of the slaves was an albino? He's actually played by a white guy with bleached hair. So this black exploitation movie about slavery has a white man playing a black albino and a black guy on the cover who isn't even in the movie. Talk about mixed messages. But oh, it goes deeper. I found out that these two guys were also on the cover of another movie titled Slavers. They're not in that movie either. That's gotta be weird. Hey, what do you do? Eh, do some modeling for slavery movies. It's cool. Regardless of these inaccuracies, it's hard not to love this cover. Awesome title. Denim suspenders and a Donald Faison lookalike make this one of the greatest box arts of all time. Can't believe.